Okay, um, so, oh, actually, hold on. I want to be taken so seriously. I'll do mine the other one. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, but then you're not going to be taken seriously. And oh. also, I'm, you were taller than me in the last one because my chair wasn't lifted I'm up. in real life. Yeah, I, I can't, this is not, unco- and by the way, the reason I wear a hat is because that. <laughs> you can't really record with that because every time you cut, my hair changes shape. Anyway, here we are, and we're here today to look at homeowner heat pump questions and sort of confusion with uh, installations of heat pumps. So we've noticed a lot of, uh, of people commenting on different forums that we go on, uh, not forums that we operate necessarily, but people that have had problems with heat pump installs. And in most cases, we can identify, even without going there, the likely cause of that, which will either be something to do with the system design or the implementation during the installation. And we just wanted to go through a couple of them and see if we can dispel some of those rumors and myths. So this first one is, I had a pre-installation visit from British gas installers. By the way, if you're thinking from British gas installers means high quality, no. I actually had no idea that British gas installed heat pumps. No. I'm surprised to learn that. Uh, it is it's common, it's in the kind of British public psyche that if it's British gas, it's on a pedestal. That definitely was the case. But they're now subcontractors. Uh, they've definitely not got a history of installing heat pumps. Um, and uh, the quality of their installations is nowhere near the quality of a self-employed, well, not necessarily self-employed, but someone who's more into the sort of technology of either gas boilers or um, uh, heat pumps. Uh, so anyway, had a pre-installa- uh, pre-installation site visit from British gas installers. All my 15 millimeters pipe throughout the house would have to be replaced with mainly 22. That's wrong, but I'll come on to why that would be incorrect. And some 28 millimeter pipes. If I went ahead with the if I went ahead with the installation, some information was not forthcoming when the system designer visited. I don't think that I'm prepared to have my house ripped apart to such an alarming extent. I live in a 1975 built attached house. First of all, yeah, if if you if you don't want your house ripped apart, that's, you don't. No one has to have a heat pump. You're just told what you may have to have done if you want it installed, and you make that decision. Um, Importantly, uh, it's it's not necessarily that you have to have it done. The reason that they'd be saying it, and they're they're probably correct in saying it, or a little bit understating the requirements, but heat pumps run at lower temperatures. We all know that. And because of that, they need a larger volume. So they need larger pipes and larger radiators to get the same amount of energy into the building with lower flow temperatures. So upgrading the pipes is almost always something that's recommended, unless you want to run them at very high temperatures, in which case they can be incredibly expensive to run. Here's the caveats to that. Most pipe work installed in homes for the last 70 years has been oversized to start off with because it was uh, installed for DT11, which basically means higher flow rates. It's an old old system, it's how they ran. Second of all, insulation has improved massively over the last 50, 15 years. So what they installed the pipes for originally is now an oversized pipe for the actual load of the house, which may have halved if they've got double glazing installed since, loft insulation, etc., etc. So that's a good point. You can get about 10 kilowatts through a 22 mil pipe, you know, give, give or take. So, and most houses are going to be under 10 kilowatts. Exactly. So um, with installers, there seems to be this rule of thumb, uh, perhaps in the more basic installers, that if you've got a heat pump, it has to be 28. doesn't matter what size the, um, the, uh, the heat pump is. That's completely incorrect. I'd say most of our most recent installs have just been on 22 uh, with no hydraulic separation. I won't go into what hydraulic separation is, but it's just been on the pipework that's already in there. That's A, the most efficient installation because we're not ripping up floorboards and replacing copper that's already in. Uh, B, time and travel and everything else. But obviously, C, it's cheaper. Um, So all my 15 millimetre pipes throughout the house would have to be replaced with mainly 22. That's just incorrect. Uh, 15 mil pipe work to radi- to individual radiators is absolutely fine, unless it's like humongous. I-, I can't see a situation where a 15 mil pipe wouldn't be enough to feed one radiator. Well, if it's a 1975 house, it'll have a cavity. They probably have had the cavity filled at some point. So unless it's, you know, a 300 square meter house, um, yeah, yeah, you're but, probably but, right. But, but even if it's a 300 square meter house, the 15 mil pipes running to the radiators, they're fine. It's the communal bits of pipe work. Uh, and, and this rule of 28 mil pipe work for all heat pumps is, is incorrect. 22, we often do. However, if you get up to 15, 16 kilowatt uh, heat pump, you won't need 28, you'll need 35. You need an even bigger pipe. It's about a calculated approach, not always fit, fit 28 or uh, uh, all these rules of thumb. You have to do it based on the calculation, which brings on to the next point. Uh, such information was not forthcoming when the system designer visited. When the system de- designer visits, 
they haven't done the maths yet. They're taking down the notes. You have to do the maths to see what the, the calculated load is. Then you can work out the pipe sizes off site. If it was to sit there in your house, we'd be there for, for hours working out what sort of kind of size you need. And this is just the unfortunate amount of calculation that needs to go into a well-designed system, um, uh, which, you know, uh, which is it's the downfall of heat pumps, that they're more delicate or sensitive to efficiency than, than gas boilers. I want to check uh, where I wasn't aware. I had absolutely no idea that British Gas did heat pumps. I want to find out now because that's terrifying. Yeah, OK. I suppose they've got a good customer market, huge, huge customer base. They have to move into heat pumps at some point. Yeah, everyone is. They don't have a proven track record, though, <laughs> no. which is what, you know, heat pumps are kind of all about. Um, uh, and I should imagine they'll probably be using subcontractors. Oh, yeah, they uh, use subcontractors for pretty much everything, don't they? Valent, Valent heat pumps. Interesting. Well, at least they're at, if fitting good ones. Yeah, the thing about Valent is you can kind of fit them and you know they're going to work. They can run at high temperatures and Relative be all right. Well. Right, next one. I have a solid fuel Park Ray back boiler. Council are changing it to airflow heat pump. I'm not sure on that system as it uses electric and they they said all my radiators need changing and pipework needs replacing. So rip up carpets and floorboards in all rooms. Would they be better fitting an LPG gas tank and leave all the radiators as they are all new, just getting gas tank and boiler or someone from. It's difficult to read. Should do this from the top. I, I mean, how... so they've got a solid fuel back boiler. Got a solid fuel back boiler. They changed to an airflow heat pump. Have you uh, heard air of source heat pump. Oh right, I, I thought airflow might be. I thought it might have been a brand. I'm not sure on that system as using electric. Right, uh, it says all my radiators need changing and. Uh, Pipe work needs changing, not necessarily as we said previously. Especially in a park home, they are so because they're just made out of insulation and bits like, of wood, it, and the ceilings are only a metre high. Like. But, but the, the total load in a park home would be like three kilowatts. You probably run the whole thing on, tiny. on fifteen mil, and leave all the radiators that are just fitting a gas tank. So yeah, you you could just fit a gas tank outside. The air source heat pump would work in that situation. I think that's probably a better situation for an air to air though, isn't it? No, well, you'd have to have one free, you'd have to run ductwork and stuff, or you'd have to have multiple well, units. But if it's park home. But fitting a, a gas tank, expensive, um, and when and fitting a boiler, quite expensive. I, I think air source is incredibly good. I'd be surprised they'd have to replace the radiators for a park home. They're, they're usually so warm, so efficient. Mm. Although they've got lots of outside walls, they're, they're very small spaces. So a heat pump would work, um, would work really well for that. And then you don't have to find the space for the tank. Um, well, an LPG boiler would, would work and be cheaper to run, but, you know... Well, an LPG boiler will cycle all the time in a park home because it will cycle, one that will... But it will, that means it will be 88% efficient still, um, uh, which will be cheaper to run. But, you know, if you, don't have, if you don't believe in climate change, yeah, definitely fit an LPG boiler. Customer received the generic cost is too much email from Green Homes Grant. So I put some in that were from uh, when the Green Homes Grant was trying and failing and not. being a bit horrible. Well, I think it's kind of important because um, the government have tried to support and they've tried to bring in different incentives. But the most recent one, the Green Homes Grant, which was uh, last year, 2021, um, kind of flopped. And unfortunately, a lot of people who were trying to do the right thing, were trying to get a heat pump installed, got you know 90% of the way through, got their application in, did everything they needed to, found an installer. And then the uh, Bayes or whomever was running the, the, the scheme uh, just was overloaded. They, they didn't expect so many people to be interested and, and cut it. And it's a real shame. Having my air source heat pump fitted Thursday, I need to get an EPC done to claim RHI. What is the minimum requirements for the RHI and EC, EPC? All walls are insulated, new double glazed windows and doors, underfloor heating, both floors will get loft insulated. Is there anything else I need to do? All walls have to be plasterboarded and kitchen fitted. Don't think I will get all that done by March 2022. Also, can anyone recommend someone to do an EPC near also the Chesterfield banks? No, the only thing, as they've said, is um, is to have the loft insulated. If you if the on an EPC it says that it's required to insulate your loft, then you you can't go ahead with a um, an air source heat pump, or at least you can't have the renewable heat incentive on it. Um, but as long as there's no required um, measure on your EPC, then you're good to go. I think the only two required measures are cavity or loft. As long as the EPC doesn't recommend either of those two, you can get your RHI. So RHI is renewable heat incentive. It pays you, um, I think it's quarterly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it pays you quarterly um, to, to have a renewable technology installed. However, RHI is ending in March 2022 uh, and it's being replaced with something called BUS, 
boiler upgrade scheme. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Just quickly, will the new boiler upgrade scheme require an EPC as well? Yes, it will. And it will still require that cavity and loft is not recommended. Sure, got it's chance. not put down as recommended. However, it doesn't need to be two years old in order to be done. Ten years yeah. old. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't. It doesn't matter if they don't have double glazing and loads of other stuff. It's just the cavity or the loft. Cavity and the loft. But yes. Yeah. 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 That's it. Cool. Thanks, mate. So that's our renewable heat guy who works for us. Um, uh, that's what the new scheme is going to have. It's basically the same as the old one. You have to have cavity and, and well, if the EPC has to say that it doesn't require loft and cavity insulation. But you could have single glazing in special cases. It would be a bad idea, but you could have it. Uh, and interestingly now, if you've got an EPC that's within the last 10 years, as you just said, uh, then it's valid. It was previously that it was only two years. I suppose the thing about uh, single glazing is if it's like a listed building or something like that, whereas a listed building can still have loft insulation, for example. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. What to do when a client insists they don't want two rads changed because the rooms have been decorated? We're changing most of the other rads, but has anyone been able to get round this for MCS? You can't really get round that as per se. Well, you don't have to design the room to 21. You could design it to 17 if you want. Or you don't have to design for that flow temperature. You could design for a higher flow temperature. Um, again, it's not a great idea, but I suppose that's what engineering is, isn't it? It's compromises. I think as long as you're open and honest with the client and you talk about it and you demonstrate it and you put it into the, the calculations, as long as they know, it's their choice if they would rather have a cooler room than, um, than change the radio. This is the thing with all uh, customers. If you're looking for a heat pump engineer, this is the kind of conversation you want to be hearing from them about what the sacrifices that you're having to make if you, if you want these kind of um, uh, parameters catered for. You should be hearing this kind of thing back i.e. what it does to your heat pump cop uh, at the end, not, yeah, we'll do that. If you get a, yeah, we'll do that, they're just trying to make money out of the job. They're not trying to do the best job possible. What you don't want is for them to say, that's fine, we'll raise the overall temperature from the heat pump to accommodate those two rooms and heat them up adequately, because that will be way over for the other rooms, which will overheat and then have to turn off, and your overall coefficient of performance will be way lower than you should be able to expect. So just have some cold rooms or some backup heating of some kind. I've got to be honest, I joined this group with the excitement of having bought a new home, even though it runs on bottled gas. I imagine a, I imagined a lovely, homely air source heat pump, underfloor heating, big rads upstairs, hot water, blah, blah, blah. But the amount of posts I see on here and other sites, people with multiple problems from poor install, error codes, heat loss, warm water, clunky noises, one had a cat crapping in front of their heat pump and they swore they could smell it in the house. That's not true, by the way. <laughs> Only if it's blowing it towards the house. <laughs> it seems there's more problems, but eventually the tech will improve and the world will be saved. It's starting to push me towards an underground gas tank. I'm just losing faith that air source heat pumps are, uh, are fit for purpose. The... the, the media and social media is filled with this because if you've had an installation and it's gone as planned and your house is no different you don't notice any difference you don't go to social media and go guess what i've just had a heating system and i haven't noticed anything different i'm adequately warm i'm quite comfortable and my bills are about right headline news isn't it let's get the sun in um you, you only go if you've spent thousands of pounds and it's not worked this person also says that it looks like the technology needs to come along and it needs to get better the technology is brilliant the technology is fantastic. It's the understanding of a lot of the installers that's the problem. Uh, you could fit the cheapest unit, um, but have the best installer fit it, and it's going to last a hell of a lot longer with fewer problems than if you fitted the most expensive unit, but didn't really know what you were doing. The variable being the installer. And actually, we've got a video due out, which will be um, titled something like how to find your best installer. So um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and that will help you decipher the guy that's going to make it work as best as possible, comfort-wise, but also from a cop perspective. And if this installer might be, you know, a bit more expensive, let's say a thousand pounds more expensive, the gulf between a poorly operating air source heat pump and a really well operating heat pump could be two hundred percent or so, uh, which obviously is going to make a dramatic difference to your running costs over the next ten years or so that it's in there. It is frustrating that people that were originally optimistic and thinking about going for um, something a bit more forward thinking 
Um, not that there's anything wrong necessarily with going for a boiler. If that's your backup, they can be incredibly efficient. But it is a bit frustrating when they're completely swayed by you know the tiny margin of people that are shouting the loudest because they've had a problem. Um, but that's kind of the way of the world, isn't it? I have had quotes for both air and ground source heat pump installations. What I'm concerned about is that this is only one part of the system and reading posts as a complete system has to be designed correctly to work efficiently. Totally correct. The most important thing is a system, not just the one heat source. The project I'm working on, it's significant and has to be completed in stages, which makes it a little bit more complicated. Should I engage a heating system designer to specify the complete solution or align a heat pump installers to advise? Heat pump installers should be system designers. That should be one and the same thing. Well, I actually better. disagree, and I don't think we should say what you're about to say. So there are plenty of uh, companies that will do the design, and then they'll find subcontractors to do the install. And as long as the design is really good, the commissioning is good, and there's a decent contract in place for the subcontractor, it can be okay. But, so it doesn't have to be the installer that does the design as well. No, no, what I'm saying is um, they're specifying the putting the box outside being different to the design of the inside. Anyone can put the box outside. It's the connection to that box, which is which is the system design that's the important bit. Uh, putting a box outside, literally anyone could do. Uh, should I engage a heat system designer specifies a good design competent installer and decent kit along with post install support are key elements in my opinion. Yeah, totally. That's he's, he's got it. He's kind of on the right path there. You've really when you go out and look for quotes for a heat pump installation, you really have to be drilling down on their knowledge of system design and not what the box is doing outside, although it you know, makes a bit of difference, how they're gonna make that box perform on the inside, keep you comfortable and keep your bills down. Uh, that's what you've got to decipher from your installer. How much does he know about that? Uh, one way might be to check on the HeatGeek website to see if they've done the HeatGeek training. Reading, I'm reading posts about low electricity bills. I've had a heat pump installed in November and it took until February to sort out problems with the installation. I have real concerns about whether the capacity of the system is adequate. It still seems to struggle to get warm enough, although I can't be sure until I've had, until we have cold temperatures, and the costs are astronomical. My bills are t uh, still two hundred pounds plus each month, even in April, when it's hardly freezing. Any advice on what I can do? Uh, it's been a complete nightmare. My house is not big, a small bungalow with a loft conversion. Right. So first of all, the most important bit is the system design. So hopefully that's done right. If that is done right, the next most important stage of having lower bills is that it's commissioned correctly. Again, we have a video coming out on how it should be commissioned. We're trying to make it simple for the consumer so that maybe the consumer could understand. Um, and that's basically how to minimize the flow temperatures from the, um, the heat pump. Because if it hasn't, it could be designed really well. If it hasn't been commissioned correctly with the uh, correct controls, then it will just ruin the, um, the, the heat pump's uh, cop. So, um, that's kind of a lot to go into to how to make it more efficient, but we are doing a video on that. Have you got any thoughts? No, I mean, electricity bills are really high at the moment. Um, and what we hope, and certainly what we've heard uh, on the grapevine, is that at some point there'll be a bit of a rebalance to fuel costs. Gas has been, it's hugely subsidized and very cheap for a very long time. And electricity historically has only ever gone up. It, I mean, it's gone up really sharply in the last six months, but hopefully at some point it will come down a little to help with that. This won't help this person necessarily because there's still underlying problems with the design or the implementation. Hi, we're in Devon. How do we get an independent check of our air source heat pump? We're not working again. We just had an upgrade and our pressure keeps dropping. We're a bit concerned as the system has only been two years and our electricity bills are insane and the system keeps failing. So you've got a leak. Um, you, you can get independent check, but you'll you'll have to pay someone to come out and see it. You will have to pay, but um, well, you'll have to pay if your original installer won't come back. If it was done under MCS and you get the RHI, then they'll be governed by uh, someone like REC, in which case they'll be required to come back and fix it. And if they don't, you can go through one of the consumer uh, agencies to to tell them that they have to. Um, and if it's a leak, then that should be relatively easy to fix. The other things, the high electricity bills, that's to do with design again. People have been installing heat pumps for years, not that efficiently. The main thing for heat pump installation is the system design. And the only course I'm aware of out there that teaches system design and proves that people know system design is the Heat Geek course. Look for a Heat Geek uh, from our map. They'll come out and tell you what could be improved, what was wrong, or which settings to tweak. Or look out for the video that we're going to come out with soon, a uh, homeowner's guide to improve your heat pump. Or I think we're going to call it something like three easy steps to improve your heat pump cop. In fact, let's go on the map now and see 
I mean, Devon's quite a big place, obviously, but let's see how many installers we've got roughly in Devon. Ooh, lovely Devon. So we've got loads from uh, uh, from Bristol all the way down to Weymouth and then a little bit to the west. We've got, you know, uh, 10 or so installers that could be contacted for an independent verification. So these guys have gone through very difficult training with not A to D answers at the end, very technical questions. Uh, and um, they've proven that they understand the very in-depth parts of system design that maximise COP. I still think it's important that installers should be held accountable. So if they're registered with either REC or HICE, you should really contact them uh, and they should hold them accountable. Cool. Looking for a local engineer to Bedfordshire for some advice on a badly installed air source heat pump. If it's been installed badly, the actual thing itself, the mm. bit outside, will be fine. Yeah. So the badly installed bit is that they haven't upgraded the radiators or they haven't set up the controls properly and that's all stuff that you would have had to have paid for anyway and if you pay for it now you're going to dramatically increase the efficiency of your system. Customers, so this is an engineer speaking, customers electric bills over £350 a month and it's still not heating up the house or hot water. Well yeah that's definitely design. The property is over two years old and has underfloor heating throughout. Underfloor heating you you should be hitting really high efficiencies with underfloor And heat. a two year old bill, I mean it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna have no need for energy. That should be like a copper four, maybe even five. The heat's yeah. going somewhere wrong. Uh, you, you might even just need a normal plumber. Uh, it sounds like a valve's turned off or something. To be honest I've never had such an expensive heating system. Not sure I like air source heat pumps. Noisy and ugly. <laughs> I mean, the issue with this is, obviously, he may be right in his situation, but that, it, they, the point is they don't need to be that way. They can be quiet, um, they can look better or be hidden uh, more, and they don't need to be as expensive, potentially, as he's paying for at the moment. They definitely shouldn't be noisy. Uh, so if if you install one on a flat roof, uh, it, it will just use the roof as a speaker. It will make it quite noisy. And if it's uh, not been serviced properly for quite a long time, or if it's one of the sort of cheap ones that isn't necessarily uh, supported that much in the UK, it could be a bit noisy. But if it's a decent flagship brand, any of the known manufacturers, it should be pretty quiet. Um, so we've got a, a Valent Aerotherm Plus outside. We've got some others as well. The Aerotherm Plus has been running for a year or so and it hasn't been serviced yet. And we've noticed that the bearings have started to make it a tiny bit audible. It was silent before. Um, so we're going to get one of our engineers to service it and hopefully it will go back to being completely silent. From the Times today, the future home standard will require low carbon alternatives to gas boilers, such as electric heat pumps in all new homes by 2025. But A, considering uh, the consulting giant found that there were only about 1,200 qualified heat pump installers in the UK, while almost 10,000 will be required by 2025. Lots of scope for new heat pump engineers, and I assume good margins for years to come. Good margins, I'm not sure of. Um, yeah, there does need to be more heat pump installed. But the problem is... The heat pump install, anyone can install the heat pump. It's very, very simple. The problem is system design. We, we're going to need 10,000 system designers. We should already have them because we should have already mandated it when we put in gas boilers. Instead, we just said, just throw them in. They'll work. They'll be fine. We didn't look at low temperature uh, uh, systems, which can save a lot of gas. Um, we've never revisited training. All we do is replace radiators like for like and just whack it up to high temperature. The, the issue isn't the heat pump. It's that the industry got lazy. So I coined a phrase a while ago that for the last generation or so, we've had a get out of education free card with um, especially combi boilers, but pretty much all modern boilers because the all the customer wants is to be warm. They don't notice if the boiler is operating at 85% efficiency or 95% efficiency and gas is quite cheap, so it won't really make a difference. So all installers, and you know, we, we are installers, we both did apprenticeships as well and went through the traditional methods, We've been able to fit boilers, and if we didn't want to, we didn't have to tailor it properly. We didn't have to do the install as well as we as we do, or as we certainly try, because you'll get away with it. You won't get away with it with heat pumps. The difference in efficiency is so vast, and electricity is quite expensive. Your customer will instantly know, and you will have to know as an installer, how to do the best job possible. Additionally to that, uh, even if we don't, let's just forget about heat pumps. We are in the middle of a climate change crisis, um, if we're just going to use gas boilers, we still need to make them as efficient as possible. And the way to do that is the same solution as heat pumps, system design training. People are going to need to learn it regardless. So you're atta attacking both issues, uh, both sides of the issue by, by training anyway. So it's, it's an important point. It's correct. But um, uh, 
the, the result's the same. We need to train up system designers. I need it a little bit bigger, please. So own up. Uh, bear in mind, these are all real uh, posts from real people. So own up. Who's had the heat pump installed incorrectly on the heat trial? Dykin fellow representing them came out and was none less pleased. Six out of ten for the install being generous. I've asked for the report, but they haven't sent it yet, and so far have failed to keep two plumber appointments and one electrician one. How's everyone else doing? As the fella said, everyone has looked. Everyone he's looked at has been incorrect. Thanks, guys. Well, yeah, uh, we we know that uh, standards come down hugely when there's big companies involved and they're outsourcing the installs to people that aren't necessarily well trained. Um, and it's always been the case, and it will always be the case. And also with the new uh, border upgrade scheme coming out, hopefully uh, after the RHI finishes in March. I'm worried that we'll see even more of this. There's only 30,000, uh, roughly 30,000 uh, budgeted air source heat pump installs uh, by the government. Uh, and we're worried that the vast majority of those will go to bigger companies. Yeah, uh, if the issue with heat pumps is uh, system design and um, how uh, careful people are when they're designing on, on the inside of the house, when people just jump to big numbers and, and big install volumes, but they have a, a big office space, you, you can't address those things that are off-site easily. There's just too much to do. We need to be training up the engineers on-site, not have a credible company like or whoever else. Uh, that means you can, oh, they can chuck money out if it goes wrong. Well, chucking money out if it goes wrong might bring you up to, okay, it works where it should be. Let's try and reach a bit further than that. Let's try and get really good, superb installs. I think there is actually another way of attacking this issue um, uh, and, and getting higher volume, uh, which is it is training up the guys on site uh, and watch this space because um, I think that we might have a potential. Well, chuck money at it at the beginning uh, to make sure that they don't have all of these problems. So if chucked money at having decent system design and made sure that they hired people that understood uh, retrofit especially, then they wouldn't have these problems. And it would be a short-term uh, expense for long-term gains for any company like that. Basically, just get all your installers to do the heat geek course. It's literally going to solve all of these issues. We wouldn't even need to do this channel. It's also currently the only uh, low-carbon and system design training available. Low-temperature uh, heating system design. The uh, only other low-temperature heating design coming out is only a two-day course. This would take weeks to do in person. It's an online course and it really is, we truly believe, the solution. Wondering if anyone can help. What's the process in big and being MCS accredited, how hard is it to get the accredited? What does it cost? And ultimately, is it worth for a one-man band like myself? So this is obviously not a consumer question, um, but to answer this question so consumers understand, for a, uh, Patrick's going to agree with what I'm going to say, for a one-man band, absolutely not. It's a nightmare. Uh, how much does it cost? If The cost is in time, in setting up and all the processes you have to see. So how do you quantify that? You have to uh, allow you know your own... Uh, put a price on your own time, but it takes weeks to get eventually accredited. And then once you are accredited, the extra paperwork takes weeks. So um, is it worth it for a one-man band? In my opinion, probably Patrick's, absolutely no it'll way. It would be tough. It would be a lot of work. We do know people that are one-man bands that have done it, and they're also the sorts of people that work until 2 o'clock in the morning uh, on lots of days of the week. So is it worth it? Probably not. But one of the things that we've always said is uh, that cooperation is, is and collaboration is a good idea. Um, but as a consumer, if you're... Uh, trying to find out whether an installer is good. If they're a, a one-man band and they've got their MCS on their own, they're very hard-working people. They, um, they're led by passion, not by money, for sure. Uh, oh, and by the way, just in case you didn't know, MCS is like the kind of main trade body for renewable installers. So um, they make sure that things are done a certain way. It's who you really should be using if you, got, uh, if you get a heat pump installation. It doesn't guarantee they're good. It doesn't guarantee they know about system design, but it does ensure uh, a good kind of robust company. If a company isn't very good at design and their MCS, they'll only last a year or two um, in the MCS process. They'll just get kicked out or fold. Help appreciated, please. Just got a free air source heat pump installed as part of a government and pilot initiative. The blokes who installed it were very keen to push off on Friday, a rush off on Friday, and gave him the briefest of tips on how to work with it. Ugh. Basically said, don't switch it off and just turn it up and down, heat there, and then left. So do I really need to ever turn it off? My default with my old boiler was to have heating turned off unless it was very cold. My radiators were upstairs, were never on. With air source heat pump, do I need to think of it like a fridge and always have it on? 
Well, I know Adam has a lot to say about this. <laughs> I've got literally a video coming up this very soon because it's um, it's a very misunderstood point, this. When people say, leave the heat pump on, they don't mean leave your house at 21, 22 all the time. They mean uh, use setback temperatures. So at night time, you might have it set slightly lower. So if you use too wide a setback, it, will, it just is turning it off. You have to have it at a sensible temperature at night, maybe two degrees below your daytime comfort temperature. Um, typically, you'll find that that keeps it uh, comfortable. I could go into a lot more detail, but I think I'll probably rather save it for the, the video, to be quite What honest. we can say is that the guys that were, you know, on a Friday trying to get off as soon as possible, it's an absolute requirement that the controls are demonstrated to the user. Um, so they are contravening whatever they're regulated by. Yeah. Uh, you can't just tell a customer, leave it on, turn it up and down. It's, it's a bit more complicated, but lots of boiler controls nowadays are a bit more complicated and they need explaining, otherwise the system won't be optimised. Absolutely. It's, it's, if you put in all this work to design a system and then don't do this bit, i.e. make sure it's used correctly or in the most efficient way, you've put all that effort in, or the installer's put all that effort in and it's being wasted. It does need explaining properly. This is part of the reason, say, with the thing you've got this separation of installers you know they're subcontractors they'll go around they get in they get out separate from the you know the main uh, mcs registered company that's doing it that's part of the problem that's why generally you want the installer to be the guy that's mcs to speak factually this is typically what goes on they just get in and get out and tell you look turn the stat up here don't touch anything else which is why i'm releasing a video on how to recommission your system or how to get your installer to recommission your system to maximize efficiency it'll go into lots of detail about exactly this i think unfortunately in this case as in as as with a lot of cases the installers that were there were probably subcontractors they may have never fitted this before so it may not be that they didn't have time and they wanted to get off they may not have understood the controller enough to explain it to the customer because they're not experienced. So it's always good to ask the installer when they turn up, how many of these have you installed? Do you understand the controls well? Um, and this is something we'll be going into a little bit later in one of the episodes. Okay, so that was the last one. Um, if you guys have got any questions that you want answered, we'll make this a regular thing. Uh, we might even get Richard to join us at well, one point. He's another uh, one of us engineers. Post your questions down below uh, and we'll answer them. Yeah, if you've got any pain points, if you've had something installed you don't think it's working properly, or more crucially, if you're about to have one and you, uh, you're a bit worried about whether it'll work, send us some messages and we'll see if we can answer them. Exactly, and, and that's the whole part about this series, the Consumer Series, which is a playlist on our Heat Geek uh, YouTube channel. Look out for that series if you're a consumer or a buyer, because that's going to get you through this potentially very disastrous uh, experience if you go down the wrong way, uh, and help just help you get through that whole process as best as possible and have the best as possible outcome. Domestic heating is going through the biggest evolution since heating was centralised, um, and there's a lot of pitfalls, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But if it's done correctly, there's a lot of things that can go right and we can have reduced carbon footprints and reduced running costs and still have warmer homes. If you like this content or this video, do give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future consumer advice.